How's it going, Reef Keepers? Sorry about the cord mess. Um, I've been doing some work, and obviously it shows. When my cords get messy, it's because I'm working on it, and uh, then I got to go back and have a different work day to clean up the cords. So, fun stuff. Um, anyway, today I want to talk about uh, how I manage heat on the tank. So, uh, I manage heat with like basically like three layers of obsessive uh, redundancy and or fail safes in play. So, I'll just start where the heat starts with my Helio system. So uh, I've made numerous uh, videos about it, have a review on it, but the Helios uh, heating system by Innovative Marine, right here, here's the box. Here are the two 200 watt elements that I have in there for a total of 400 watts of heat on a 110 gallon reef system. Um, so yeah, I, like it, that easily takes care of this tank. Um, I let, so I've got, I, I, I'll make mention of this, I have, the Helio system plugged into my Neptune Apex uh, EB832. So I have it plugged into a controllable outlet, um, but the Apex outlet is, you know, on with, it, it does not go on and off to manage like the Helio. It ha the Apex is programmed to turn off the Helio system if the temperature goes above 80 degrees in the tank. So if the temperature, it's never gotten that high. So if the temperature goes above 80 degrees in the tank, I, basically I know that the Helio is stuck on. And I've never had a problem with that happening. The Helio has been rock solid. But I'll, I know that if it goes above 80, even on a hot day in the summer, that something went wrong. Like, you know, we're in trouble here. There's an element that's not switching off. Um, there's been a major malfunction. We need to cut off power to the heating system completely. So the Apex will take care of that. That's my that's my fail safe on the Helio system. But the Helio system for the cost, I sure as heck hope that would never happen. It has never happened ever. And the Helio system actually is so stable. Uh, it keeps your temperature um, within 0.1 degree of what you want it to be. So I use like a scientific thermometer that I bought on either Amazon or Bulk Reef Supply for like $50 to, and it comes like pre-calibrated to measure my water temperature. Then I set the Helio to be at 77 degrees and I set, uh, so basically the Helio, if it reduces to 16, 60, sorry, 76.9 degrees, that 0.1 degree difference will activate, uh, the, like the box will send, will activate the elements and heat it back up, um, to 77, which is crazy. So like, you know, on a day that your heater needs to really work to keep the tank temperature, like that Helio is going on, off, on, off, on, off all day. But all of that on, off, on, off wear is happening on the Helio system itself, on the box, which is a premium product that is built to take a lot of, you know, click, 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 on and off um, wear and tear. And I've already got another one on mothballs waiting to, to come in because this is a five-year-old Helio system. So, um, but again, like I expect a product at that cost to last at least five years and it has been, you know, an absolute beast. So, um, from there, I'll talk about the ink bird. Okay. Cause this is like layer two. So that's, that's Helio and apex and everything to do with like, you know, what goes on on a day to day basis. The ink bird is for when things are not you know, functioning normally and or one set of redundancy to let me know if something bad is happening to the tank. So on the Inkbird, I, this is the Inkbird ITC 308S, I wanna say. Um, it, I'm sorry if I'm wrong on that. It has a rubberized uh, aquarium rated temperature probe and it actually is the version that has two outlets, one for cooling, one for heating. Uh, so I prefer that version because I want to either, I wanna have the Inkbird be able to manage cooling the tank uh, as well as be a fail safe for heat. So basically, if the heat in the tank goes below 76 degrees, so like one full degree low, uh, you know, on its regular temperature, the Inkbird kicks on a 200 watt Eheim, you can see the little, the little blue top of it, 200 watt Eheim heater that runs across the back of the sump. Now that's the, that's the most wattage I could get that fit in this sump without sticking way out the top of the water. Um, I needed to be able to lay it down sideways in there. So basically what it would do, you know, I need at least 400 Watts to, you know, properly heat this amount of water on like a cold day. And when it's cold in the house, 
So what it would do is it would slow the rate of temperature decrease and it would immediately, th of course, throw me a notification. I also have the Apex program to throw me a notification if, I, if we get 0.5 degrees low. So if it hits 76.5, which has like never happened, the Apex would throw me a notification first. So I would know, hey, something's going on. Then if I get the Inkbird notification that it's activated that redundant heater, that emergency heater, and that it's 76 or lower, I'm like, okay, we have a serious situation. Like I need to address it right now because the Helio has obviously failed at that point. Um, again, none of that's ever happened, but that's how I have it all set up. And then if it gets too hot, I have uh, the Inkbird set to activate fans at I think 78 degrees. So if, if we're one full degree above where we should be, the Inkbird automatically kicks on these dual fans here that blow across the surface of the water and therefore, you know, dissipating heat. And they blow like up toward this side. And then I have two large computer fans mounted to egg crate. You can see it right, see them right there. And they blow out into the room um, and therefore cool the tank. So it's Mississippi where I live. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's hot. <laughs> it gets hot, hot in the summer. And those kick on just about every day in the dead heat of like, you know, July, August, right? So, um, yeah, they're very important to keeping my temperature in check, but they do keep it in check. Like it basically stops rising when those kick on. So anyway, um, that's the long and the short of how I approach heating uh, on my nano tanks. For the record, I've got uh, ink birds on both of them. I also have like the quote unquote light version of controllers on both those tanks. So like I have a redundant thing for the ink birds on those tanks. But I just let ink, I have Inkbird, you know, Wi-Fi capable Inkbirds on both tanks with only heat control. Uh, doesn't have any, I don't have any cooling fans in those tanks. I haven't found that I needed them up in that part of the house. Um, but basically, uh, yeah, the Inkbird just, you know, when, when we're one temperature out of, out of wonk, it kicks on um, one temperature low or one, <laughs> one degree low they kick on and heat the tank back up to where it should be. That's how the Inkbird works. And for nano tanks, it's like the perfect heat control. Um, you don't even need an aquarium controller for nano tanks. I just had extra ones from being a nerd. Um, but yeah, that's that's how I run those. So Inkbird, highly recommended, great system. Helio, high rec highly recommended, great system. And Neptune Apex, even though I'd probably do it differently if I had it to do over again, um, still has you know worked out solid for me and makes me feel good about you know leaving the tank. So. Um, all right, guys, that's it. I won't talk you off anymore. Appreciate you listening, and uh, please like and subscribe if uh, you enjoy these videos. Appreciate it.